Hey y'all, Data Guy here, and today in yet another uh, video of my recent series going into all the different open data formats for managing delta lakes or data lakes, sorry, had a little slip up there because today we're gonna be talking about delta lakes. Um, and delta lakes are another open source data, data lake, primarily used for data lake, but it's another open source storage layer that brings ACID, which is atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability transactions to big data workloads, primarily attached to Apache Spark. And so how Delta Lake works is that it sits on top of existing storage layers, um, whether you know that's something like an S3 bucket, that's something like a Snowflake database, um, really whatever storage layer you're using, or you know, even traditionally like something like a Azure Delta Lake storage or Hadoop distributed file storage. Um, and it's going to allow you to basically query data from across these different object stores in that classic data lake style and build reliable and scalable data pipelines out of them. So Delta Lake itself is really is part of the broader ecosystem of the Databricks uh, unified data analytics platform but it can also be used independently with Apache Spark as an open source project because at the end of the day, Databricks is just a managed Spark offering um, with obviously tons of bells and whistles thrown around it. Um, and so Delta Lake and the reason it was developed by Databricks is trying to address the inherent challenges of traditional data lakes, um, such as you know, data inconsistency, the lack of schema enforcement, and the difficulties in handling concurrent data rights and updates. And by introducing features like schema enforcement, time travel, and a transaction log, Delta Lake really helps to ensure data reliability and consistency and make it easier for organizations to manage and analyze really large data sets. So now breaking down into, hey, how does Delta Lake actually work? Um, and compare, you know, some of some of its key features compared to other just traditional data lake functionality, which is shared by Delta Lake and pretty much every other uh, open source data lake format provider. Um, but Delta Lake is really all about asset transactions. It's the first feature they mentioned on their website uh, because they want to ensure data reliability and consistency uh, and supporting those asset transactions. And so that means that all operations within data that is contained within a Delta Lake needs to be either atomic, um, so it's completely successful or, or unsuccessful, consistent, meaning that data integrity is maintained, um, isolated, which means that transactions don't interfere with one another, and durable. So once a transaction is committed, it's permanent. And this is achieved through the use of a transaction log that records all changes to the data so it can verify if it meets those ACID format or those ACID parameters and then can decide to mark that as invalid or valid. Another way it helps to enforce this is through schema enforcement. Um, so it ensures that all data written to the lake adheres to a predefined structure. Um, and this is actually kind of unique in the data lake ecosystem because a lot of times there's not schema enforcement and that's kind of the point of a data lake sometimes. Um, is to be able to take all this unstructured data no matter its format. But with the schema enforcement Delta Lake, it does help prevent issues related to data inconsistency and then also makes it easier to maintain data quality over time. It's just you might have to do a little more pre-processing to your data to actually make it compatible uh, with Delta Lake. Then third, you know, with all this consistency, the snapshots I mentioned, one of the more unique features of Delta Lake is its support for time travel, which allows users to query previous versions of your data, and then also allows you to revert your data to earlier states if you need to, or if you wanna perform things like audits on historical data. And this time travel feature is made possible by the transaction log. Um, and the transaction log is essentially what's going to be keeping track of all the changes to your data over a, a long time frame. Um, fourth, also have one system for unified batch and streaming data. So Delta Lake allows for the seamless integration of batch and streaming data processing, which is really useful because um, most organizations will have a hybrid approach depending on the type of data they're using. Um, and this means that you can use those same data pipelines for both real and batch, real time and batch analytics, simplifying that architecture and then also reducing that operational complexity too. Um, and then five, actually not up in here, but is also important to mention, is 
data compaction and optimization. Um, so over time, data lakes can typically become fragmented and inefficient due to small files and poorly optimized data layouts. But Delta Lake actually provides mechanisms for data compaction and optimization. So data is stored in a way that maximizes performance and then also minimizes storage costs. And you can see that with this kind of scalable metadata uh, features as well. And then finally, scalability and performance. Um, it is designed to scale with data and handle petabytes um, of data with ease. Um, and so it also has some performance optimizations alongside that. So doing things like data skipping, efficient file management to make sure that queries are processed quickly, even if you are querying across petabytes of data. So now that we know about the key features of you know, Delta Lakes, what are some of the best use cases that make use of those key features? First is serving as the backbone of your data warehousing strategy. Um, it's able to provide a reliable and scalable storage solution that supports both time, both real time and batch analytics, um, which you're going to need to support both of. Um, and so, having a solution that you don't, you know, you don't need to have two different solutions for two different use cases helps you consolidate and just not have a super bloated tech stack. Second, data lakes. So this is, you know, as kind of more of, a, I would think of it as an enhancement to traditional data lakes, where if you need a data lake style format, but with some more rigid schema enforcement, Delta Lakes address some of those common issues of data lakes. So data consistency, lack of governance, and make it a preferred choice for organizations that are trying to build scalable data lakes um, that are gonna deal with really high volume. Third, real-time analytics. So because it has that support for streaming data, Delta Lakes are really ideal for use cases that require real-time analytics. Um, so for things like fraud detection, real-time recommendation engines, uh, monitoring systems, all gonna be super good use cases for Delta Lakes. Fourth, we have machine learning. So Delta Lake's ability to ma manage really large data sets and then also have those historical versions of data. So you can go and test the machine learning model on a subsection of old historical data, make it really suitable for machine learning workflows where data consistency and quality are critical to getting really accurate results that you can actually use in the real world. And fifth, data governance and compliance. So that time travel feature we've mentioned of Delta Lakes is really particularly useful for data governance and compliance because it allows you to really quickly just audit historical data and ensure compliance regulations if you need to pull for you know a subsection of data uh, of a past financial year or something like that um, and then finally the classic etl pipelines you know delta lakes really help to simplify the creation and management of etl pipelines and elt pipelines um, by providing a reliable data storage and processing layer um, and also capabilities to enhance those workflows as well. So it's pretty easy to build and maintain complex data pipelines that run on top of Delta Lake. So now finally, I wanna wrap up this video with really a discussion about the pros and cons of Delta Lakes um, and help you understand, you know, is this a good solution for me? Is this not? Because while I have mentioned a lot of the good, there, there are some downsides, but first, so more of the good kind of summarized. So some pros of, of Delta Lake, number one, data reliability. Um, it's support for asset transactions. Make sure that your data is reliable and consistent, even in really complex, really large scale data processing scenarios. Two, scalability. Delta Lake's designed to handle, again, that large scale data processing, allow you to horizontally scale your data and make it suitable for organizations that have those really big data needs. Three, Schema enforcement. By enforcing schemas, Delta Lakes can also help you to maintain data quality and consistency over time um, and make sure that you, know, you have clean data that can be used for downstream activities easily. Um, and then four, kind of supporting that, is the time travel capability, super sick. Uh, the ability to query that is historical data versions is just a really nice quality of life feature for you know auditing, compliance, troubleshooting, even for machine learning workflows, just a lot of uses and super nice. Um, fifth, Unified data processing. Delta Lake's support for both batch and streaming data processing helps to simplify the data architecture, allows you to consolidate on a single format and platform and reduce the operational complexity that would come with having two different platforms that you have to kind of merge and have play nice together into one end system. Um, and then fifth or sixth is open source and ecosystem integration. As an open source project, it benefits from a really broad community of users and contributors, but it also has Databricks kind of driving a lot of its development. Um, and it also you know, obviously integrates well with other tools in the Apache Spark ecosystem, which is a whole lot of different tools. So 
really well integrated and well developed. Now, on the flip side of things, we do have a few cons. Um, so number one is Delta Lakes, you know, with all the kind of things you need to set up and, and maintain, it introduces some additional complexity compared to traditional data lakes, especially for organizations that are not already pretty familiar and in deep with Apache Spark. Um, and then, as you can imagine, it's quite resource intensive with all these advanced features, you know, having to check for asset transactions, time travel, maintaining those historical snapshots. It's pretty resource intensive and requires a pretty large amount of computational and storage resources for overhead and obviously just for the database itself. Um, and then third, it's pretty dependent on Spark. You know, you can theoretically use it with other platforms, but it's very, very closely tied with the use of Apache Spark. So if you're not already using Apache Spark, it's gonna be pretty stupid and challenging to adopt Delta Lake, honestly. Um, and then fourth, Implementing Delta Lake, you know, again, requires a good understanding of its architecture and features with that complexity. There's a lot of things you can do wrong. Um, and so it can be a learning curve for, you know, teams that are not, that are new to that kind of technology. Um, but in conclusion, Delta Lake is a really, really cool uh, advancement in kind of the management of big data, kind of merging, you know, data warehouse rigidity and, and, and historical, you know, asset transactions with the, the wide horizontal scaling of a data lake. Um, but obviously that also introduces some complexity and resource requirements because you got to pay for that with your compute. Uh, but really cool solution if you're already using a lot of Spark. Um, highly recommend it. And uh, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned a little bit and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.